Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. I hope you're having a great day. My name is Eric and I'm glad you could join us because today we are making yet another turkey-based charcuterie. Today I'm going to show you how to make a 100% turkey hot dog that is just loaded with flavor. You're going to want to stick around to the end of this video because we're going to taste our hot dog and see if we can nail the texture. Through this video, I'm going to share with you some really cool tips and tricks that you can apply to any emulsified sausage project and it will greatly increase your chance of success. So thanks for joining us. Let's get into it. Okay, let's make a turkey hot dog. We're going to start off with some dark meat, uh, turkey thigh meat, and we've got some breast meat. And all we're going to do is cut this into small pieces, really small enough to fit into your grinder head. So depending on what kind of grinder you're using, you know, you can do small strips, small cubes. It really doesn't matter. So we're just going to take that, set that to the side, and we're going to combine our white meat and dark meat together and put that into the freezer. We want it partially frozen before we grind it. For the fat in this hot dog, we're going to be using turkey skin. Now, I'm gonna process this the exact same way. So we're gonna cut that into small pieces, uh, but I don't wanna mix it with the meat. We're gonna grind the meat and the fat separate. So once I get that cut up into small pieces, I'm gonna place that into the freezer so that it could partially freeze as well. While that's partially freezing, let's take a look at our spices. We're gonna start off with a little salt, and then I'm gonna add some white pepper and smoked paprika. If you check the description box below, there'll be a link to this recipe with adjustable quantities. This is oregano. We're also going to add some garlic powder and some onion powder. I think I'm going to add a touch of mustard powder with a hint of coriander, give it a really nice rounded flavor. Our final ingredient is going to be non-fat dry milk. This is going to help retain moisture and it's going to help with the emulsification process. So that's our spices and our meat is now partially frozen. So on a six millimeter plate, I'm using a number 12 grinder from the sausage maker. We're going to grind our meat only and then set that to the side. I'm now going to switch plates to a three and a half millimeter plate or really the smallest one you have. And we're going to twice grind our fat. And in between grinding our fat, we're going to take it place it back into the freezer as I want the turkey fat to be completely frozen. This is going to keep the fat intact, you know, keep it from rendering during the grinding process. After we grind our fat for the second time, we're going to get everything ready for our food processor. If you don't like the texture of an emulsified sausage, you can technically stop right here, you know, mix both your meat and fat together, add your seasonings, and you're going to have a very tasty sausage. But we're going to emulsify this to make a turkey hot dog. So, our meat and fat gets rechilled, and we're going to begin to chop the meat only into our food processor. We want to keep the temperature below 44 degrees Fahrenheit as we chop our meat. And I do have to admit, I let my meat chill a little longer than I wanted as it's basically frozen, but that's completely okay. Ideally, you're going to want your meat's temperature between 30 to 32 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, but once again, in the description box below, there'll be a recipe and I'll have all those details outlined for you. Uh, after we chop for about 60 seconds, I'm going to add a third of my ice cold liquid. This is a roasted turkey stock that we made. And we're just going to go ahead and add that in there. In addition to the liquid, now you could just use, you know, chicken stock or you could use ice. It doesn't matter. We're also going to add our spices and we're going to continue to chop. Adding the ice cold liquid in intervals helps keep the temperature of the meat down, which is critical uh, during this stage because what we're trying to do is chop up the meat into the finest particles that we can so that we can extract as much protein as we can, which will help bind everything together. So after another 60 seconds of mixing, we're going to scrape our bowl down. We're going to add another third of our stock or ice liquid because the temperature needs to be below 44 degrees Fahrenheit and an instant read thermometer is absolutely critical if you're just getting started. But on this chop, pay attention to the farce inside of our food processor. It's gonna start to take on a more smooth consistency and uh, it's gonna get very sticky. And once you're done chopping, and we're chopping here for about another 60 seconds, the temperature is still below 44 degrees Fahrenheit. And if you were to put your hand and grab the meat, the texture of it is gonna seem more like a paste. And that's exactly what you want. At this stage, we're going to add our fat and our non-fat dry milk and the rest of our ice liquid. During this chopping phase, we want to keep the temperature of our mixture below 55 degrees Fahrenheit. This is where the emulsification 
actually happens. So we're just going to chop for another 60 to 90 seconds. Just remember, keep everything below 55 degrees Fahrenheit because we don't want to break the emulsion. Uh, and we're going to stop chopping as soon as our batter looks homogenous. That means we'll no longer be able to discern the difference between meat particles and fat particles. If you grab a little bit of the meat, it'll seem slightly dense and very sticky. And that's exactly what it should look like at this stage. And just to let you know, you can apply these same rules to every emulsified sausage out there. Weisswurst, uh, mortadella, it doesn't really matter. So there's our meat batter. Let's go ahead and look at our casings. We're gonna be using very small 18, 20 millimeter sheep casings from the sausage maker. They've been soaking in some water and I've just added a little baking soda to help lubricate them. I'm gonna be cooking this sous vide. So we're gonna go ahead and get our water bath ready. And we're using a sous vide machine from Kitchen Boss. Uh, they've got a lot of presets, but I'm going to use a particular preset that I made, which will cook this turkey hot dog at 145 degrees Fahrenheit for two hours. And the beauty of cooking your hot dog sous vide is that you can cook at a lower temperature, which will help lock in the moisture. It's a lot less aggressive, and you're going to end up with just an overall better product. So we're going to click that on, let the water heat up as we get our turkey hot dog into its casing and ready to cook. We're going to cook these sous vide at 145 degrees Fahrenheit or 62.7 Celsius for one to two hours. If you don't have an immersion circulator, you can always poach these in 175 degrees Fahrenheit water for 18 to 20 minutes. You just want to make sure that your temperature uh, stays pretty consistent around 175. Otherwise, you could render out the fat. Once your sausages have finished cooking and you can apply this to the sous vide method or the poaching method, place your sausages in a cold water bath to stop the cooking process and your turkey hot dogs are officially ready. So let's go ahead and coat open the bag and take a look at our hot dogs and a properly made emulsified sausage is going to retain its moisture, it's going to retain its fat. So if you notice that your cooking liquid is very oily or if the bag that you cooked your hot dogs in has a lot of fat rendered in it, then that means your emulsion broke and the texture of your hot dog will be somewhat dry and crumbly. So no worries, you'll just have to try again next time. So far, everything looks good. Texture seems okay. Let's take a little peek at the center slice. Very nice looking cut. That's exactly what it should look like at this stage. Nice and moist, smooth. It's now time to taste the turkey hot dog. And I gotta admit, making an emulsified sausage can be a little tricky. It does require some special equipment, but if you pay attention to each one of the steps along the way and pay very close attention to the temperature of your meat at each one of those steps, you can produce an absolutely amazing product. So what I'm looking at here is a great slice. I mean, this thing is smooth. We've got a nice springy bounce. And uh, that's one of the characteristic signs of a well-made emulsified sausage. If your blades on your food processor or your buffalo chopper are dull, what you end up doing is whipping the meat and too much air gets incorporated. And so you'll end up with an emulsified sausage, but it's very pillowy and it just doesn't produce the right kind of texture. And so it should be a little dense with a nice springy bounce to it. And that's exactly what I'm looking at here. It smells great, a little herby, and so let's just give it a bite. Mm. Mm. Wow, okay. First of all, the texture's perfect. I mean, that is a high quality turkey hot dog, 100% turkey. We just use turkey skin and uh, turkey thigh meat and breast very moist. The salt level is perfect and the flavor 
is incredible. I mean, very, very fresh. Uh, for me personally, I think a little heavy on the oregano, and so I may just lower that a little bit, but that's the beautiful part about, you know, making hot dogs at home is you can really play with the flavor, make it spicy, make it not spicy. Um, so let me just go ahead and bite into one that's not cut just to see how that sausage casing did. We used that 18, 20 millimeter sausage casing. And so here we go. Mm. <laughs> oh yeah, very tender. Easy to bite through, nice little snap. And uh, what we've got here are fully cooked turkey sausages. So whatever you're not gonna eat, you could package up, you could place into the freezer, pull them out when you need them and then pop them on a grill uh, just to warm them back up, give them a nice little smoky touch if you wanna do that. But at this point, they're totally cooked and ready to enjoy. And I hope you get a chance to make these at home yourself. If you do, or if you have any questions, be sure to leave me a comment in the comment section below. If you like this video or found it helpful in any way, take a moment, smash that like button. That's always appreciated. And if this is the first video you've seen from our channel, we'd like to say welcome. If you like what you saw and you wanna see more, click that subscribe button and that notification bell so you can be notified of each one of our uploads. We're uploading every week and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye-bye.